Hello and welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat today. My name is Sam and I'm going to be leading you through a quick little flow for sensitive knees. So in today's practice, we're gonna be really mindful of the movement within our knees. We're gonna pay attention to properly tracking our knees forward and back right over the toes in any kind of bend. And then we're also just gonna stretch all of the surrounding muscles that surround our knee joint, so into the quads, the hamstrings, into the hips, and even into the ankles, just so that we try to really lengthen out and create space for our entire legs, because our knees being right in the middle of these two very important joints in our body definitely tend to take a lot of extra force. So we're just gonna really focus on the lower body, stretching everything out, and being super mindful of how we're approaching each pose and you will need two props for this practice. If you have sensitive knees, maybe these are things that you always practice yoga with, but just in case, you will need a blanket handy to put under your knees for extra cushion. And then we've also got two blocks here. So grab what you've got at home and we will get started. So today's class will actually start lying on your back. So you can make your way there now, coming all the way down. And we'll just start by bringing your knees into your chest and maybe just rock a little bit side to side, forward and back over the spine. So kind of massaging your lower back into the ground to start. Just starting intuitively, introducing some movement into your body. And then let's transition that into some knee circles. So you're gonna take your knees and just move them in any direction, but finding a circular motion side to side and then circling them around to come in. And then when you're ready, going to the other side. You can go at your own pace here. You don't have to follow my speed. Again, just doing what intuitively feels good for you here. And we'll come to a stop, just pulling your knees into the center once more. Hang on to your right knee and let your left leg extend out to the side. And at this point, you might just wanna have one block handy to the left side of your mat, because we're going to take that right knee, cross it over the body, coming into a laying spinal twist, but you can place a block under your knee to just kind of close that gap between your knee and the floor. So whatever height works for you, you might need to play around with it. I'm gonna put it on the second level here on this side. And then just re-anchor your right shoulder down on the floor. Your right arm can come out beside you. Eyes can be up towards the ceiling or over towards the right side of your mat, whatever feels good here. The reason we're placing the block under the knee on this side is just so that we're eliminating any kind of pulling within the knee while still achieving that nice stretch into the outer right glute. So it just adds a little bit of extra support here. Taking a couple more breaths, warming up our body. And we'll take an inhale to pull that knee back up to center, rolling back onto your hips, and then re-extend your right leg, take your left knee in, and you're, you'll want to move that block over to the other side now. So we're gonna take that left knee, take a moment to pull it in, feel that length through your right hip. And then on an exhale, let it go, and you're gonna let that knee fall to the side, and you can definitely see a bit better on the camera on this side what I'm doing with the block. So placing it right under the knee, just closing that gap between your knee and the floor, and then again, re-anchoring your left shoulder so that you find that nice spinal twist as well as your glute stretch. And feel free with any of the poses that we do in this practice to take these modifications into other flows or other practices that you do. So this nice little block trick in our spinal twist is something you could do all the time if you have a little bit of knee discomfort and if this helps ease that discomfort. So tuning into your body for today's practice and just noticing what really works for you and maybe carrying that forward into the rest of your practice. 
Continuing to breathe, we'll take one more breath. Big inhale and big exhale. You're gonna float that left knee back up on an inhale. And then from here, bend your right knee in. We're gonna flex the left foot and hook it over the right thigh. And for this now, you again are gonna wanna shift your block over to the left side. And all we're gonna do in the shape is you're actually going to just let your right knee fall towards the left, but try to maintain that hook. And then your left knee this time might fall on top of the block. And then we're just encouraging a little bit of extra internal rotation in through that right leg. And your arms for this can just open up to a T or a cactus shape position. Again, doing what feels good here. And if you feel at any point through that right knee, you feel any kind of pulling or discomfort here, you can just unhook the left foot and just let both knees fall with gravity to the side. But if not, we're gonna add that left hook just for a bit of extra guidance to pull that leg into an internal rotation. It's totally okay here if your right hip lifts. We're again finding a little bit of a spinal twist here, but just allowing that, that leg to fall. We'll take one more deep breath, take a big inhale and exhale. And on your next inhale, we'll float the legs back up to center. Same thing on the other side now. So your left foot is down on the floor. Your right leg hooks to the outside of your left thigh. Block is now on the right side of your mat. And on an exhale, we'll let the knees fall to the side here. Your right knee might come down onto your block. And then we're allowing that left leg to just sort of sink into a little bit of internal rotation here. And so with this stretch, you might feel a little bit more of a stretch into the front of your hip and the outside of your leg. So getting into your IT band and your TFL at the top of your hip. So as I mentioned, we're trying to stretch and target all of the surrounding muscles that encapsulate your knee joint. Because often with the knees, the pain can express itself in the knee, but sometimes the problem or the issue is happening somewhere else in the body. So if our hips are really tight, that might translate to feeling pain in the knees. Or if your ankles and calves are really tight, then that could also translate to pain in the knees. So trying to target all of these surrounding areas here to find a little bit of relief. Take one more breath. And on your next inhale, taking the legs back up to center, unhooking the foot, and then we're going to come all the way up. You can put your blocks to the side, all the way up to take a seat. Legs can stretch out in front of you, get settled, maybe give them a nice shake. And then you're gonna take your right knee, bend it in and cross it over your extended left leg. If this full bind is accessible to you, meaning that you can also bend in your left leg, feel free to do that, but you can keep the leg extended as well. Again, doing what's most comfortable for your body today. And once you are in your pretzel position, you're gonna inhale your left arm up, exhale to twist, hooking your elbow on the outside of your knee and finding that rotation through the spine. And I want you to feel here in this position that we're growing up and then around. Almost like your spine is a barber's pole that's continuously growing and spinning. So this is not, although we're not necessarily moving, we're still feeling that continual rotation energy. Continuing to breathe, not holding the breath in our rotation. And we'll take a final exhale to release. We're gonna go right away to the other side. So let's start with our legs extended. This time your left leg will bend in. And if it feels accessible to you, your right leg will bend as well. Feeling that cross, feel the whole of your left foot on the floor. And then we'll inhale the right arm up this time. Exhale, hooking the elbow, finding that twist, continuing to grow tall. We have our first seated position here. So automatically trying to find that length through the spine that barber pole motion, inhaling to grow, 
exhaling to twist just a millimeter farther. Take one more breath and we'll exhale, unwind, continue to rotate in the opposite direction, finding that counter rotation. And we're gonna keep going that way to spin your body over, finding a downward dog here. So take your time. I won't rush us through this. And once you get to your downward dog, right away introduce some intuitive movement, just paddling through the feet, maybe bending and stretching through the knees, taking it nice and easy. Maybe bending and stretching through the elbows, feeling your shoulders move a little bit. And now let's settle into our down dog and we're gonna take four bends through the knees from here. But what I want you to pay attention to, and it should be fairly easy because we're looking right at our knees, is I just want you to bend and look at the tracking of your knees right over your toes and then let's stretch. And let's take an exhale to bend and stretch. So keeping those knees right in line with your toes, we bend and inhale, push to stretch. Last one, bend and stretch. From here, you're gonna take your right leg, breathe it up, but keep it straight and square because we're quickly just gonna swing it through finding a low lunge, and this is where having your blanket will be handy. So just placing that underneath the left knee for a little bit of extra support. And then I'm also gonna take the blocks here to place them under my hands so that there's support here for the front knee as well and we're not just spilling all of our weight into that front leg. So get settled in this low lunge here. Feel your hips sinking forward towards the mat. Feel all three points of your right foot in contact with the mat here. And we're gonna flow in and out of this position. So keeping your hands on your blocks here, let's inhale to grow tall, opening your heart up to the sky, and then exhale, pushing into your leg, straightening it out, coming to a half split and releasing forward over that leg. Let's do that again. We're gonna inhale to come forward. Watch the knee tracking right over your ankle, right over your toes and then we exhale to take it back. Release and let it go. Use your blocks to help stabilize. Inhale, take it forward, tracking that knee. And exhale, stretch it out. Last one here. Inhale, take it forward. And exhale, push it back. Release over that front leg. We'll hold here for just a couple of breaths stretching into that right leg. And we'll take it back into the low lunge. You can move your blocks off to the side here. Place your hands framing your foot, tuck your back foot, and we're gonna take it back again to that downward dog. And just notice if your right leg feels different from the left here. And we'll go ahead and even ourselves out, breathing the left leg up, inhale, Exhale to step it forward, back knee drops down onto your blanket. Setting up your blocks once again, we're gonna repeat that sequence in and out of your lunge. So get settled here, take a moment. Feeling your shoulders pressing down away from your ears, we'll inhale to open up the chest. And exhale to extend, folding over that front leg. Again, we inhale, sink forward. And we exhale, extend and release. Twice more, inhale, take it forward, pay attention to the tracking of your knee right over your ankle, right over your toes. And exhale, push it back. Inhale, take it forward 90 degrees with that front knee. And exhale, slowly take it back. Hang out here just for a moment. Finding that release and stretch through the back of your left leg. One more breath. And we'll take it forward, bending into the left knee again. Watch that tracking so it's right over your ankle. Moving your blocks off to the side. Hands on the mat, tuck your back toes, taking it to your downward dog. 
And let's take another paddle through the feet and then settling your heels into the mat. Notice if you feel more length through the back of your legs. Notice how your knees feel in this down dog. And we're once again gonna take the right leg and inhale it up, keep it square and turned in. And then we exhale to step it forward, this time coming to a high lunge so that back knee will stay lifted. You can leave the blanket there because we might want it again a little bit later. But we're gonna set up that same block setup that we did in the low lunge here. So your blocks are on the floor under your hands. And we're lifting up through the chest. So we're alleviating all of the weight spilling into that front knee here. And check in with yourself, make sure the knee is right over top of your ankle so we have 90 degrees and that all three points of your foot are in contact with the mat here. And we're gonna repeat that same in and out sequence. So on an inhale, opening up your chest. Exhale, push into the front leg, coming to a very wide pyramid pose. So the blocks will definitely help with balance here. Your back heel might not reach the floor, which is totally okay. And let's come in and out of that, that position here. So inhale back to your high lunge. Don't let your knee go past your ankle. Exhale, straighten into your pyramid. Again, inhale, high lunge, 90 degrees. Exhale, push. Pay attention to that tracking one last time. Inhale, knee right over toes. And we exhale, finding your pyramid. Again, we're gonna hang out here just for a moment. If you'd like to shorten your pyramid pose ever so slightly, just to help with balance, that's totally okay. You can keep your blocks under your hands or move them off to the side, do what you need. Just finding that length again through the back of your right leg. And we'll to come back to our lunge first, move the blocks, placing your hands down on the mat, taking it back to your down dog. And right away, let's go to the left side, inhaling the left leg up, exhaling it forward, swing it through, high lunge blocks right under your hands. Right away, find that 90 degrees with your front knee. So make sure it's not going too far forward here. That can create a lot of compression. So 90 degrees, all three points of your foot in contact with the floor. So your first and fifth metatarsal or your big and little toe and your heel. Feeling that nice strong position and we'll move in and out of it, inhaling to open through the chest. Exhale, extend and fold forward, very wide pyramid pose here. Inhale, take it forward and exhale, hips up and back, release. Twice more, inhale, watch the knee tracking here and exhale, push it back. Last one, we inhale, sinking low, chest open, and exhale, finding pyramid. Maybe step your back foot in just a couple of inches and folding forward over that front leg. I'm gonna move my blocks a little early on this side. You're welcome to do the same at home or you can keep them under your hands to help with balance. You can keep a slight micro bend in this front knee as well. We don't want to, we don't want to lock into any kind of hyperextension. So if you know that you have hyperextension through the knees, definitely invite a soft little bend into this front leg. And we'll come back to our lunge, move the blocks if you haven't already, step it back to our final down dog and do what you need here, bending and stretching the legs. And when you're ready, dropping the knees back down onto your blanket, and this time we're gonna come all the way out onto your belly. You can move the blocks off to the side for now. And coming up onto your elbows, we're coming into a little quad stretch here. So from this sphinx position, you're gonna take your right arm, put it at a 45 degree angle, and then we'll twist towards the left with your upper body. So finding that spinal twist again, bending through your left leg, reach your left arm behind to grab that foot and just very gently guide it towards your glutes here. 
So again, look and pay attention to the tracking of your foot. You don't want it to be too far to the outside of your mat here because that's putting some torque on the knee. So try to feel that you're pulling that leg right in on top of your glutes and on top of your leg so that your knee is bending like a true hinge and we're not torquing that hinge in any way whatsoever. And if you feel pinching through your back in this position, you can always ease off and just let the leg float a little bit farther away here. Feel that your right arm is still pushing into the mat. I caught myself sinking into my shoulder a little bit. So maybe check in with yourself at home. And we'll release this side, going to the other side. So first returning to your full Sphinx pose, so your forearms are pointing forwards. And then this time your left arm comes to a 45 degree angle. First twisting to the right, feeling nice and supported and lifted through the spine. Then we bend through the right leg, reaching the right arm back, grabbing a hold of that foot. And again, watching the tracking of your knee. That foot should be right over top of your leg and not opening out to the side here. It might mean you need to adjust your grip slightly, but that's okay. Taking a couple more breaths here. And we will release that leg softly back down to the mat. From here, take your hands under your shoulders. We're gonna push back, just finding a little child's pose. Your knees can stay together here. Arms can be forward or back. And just let your spine curve over your legs. Releasing that mini back extension we just did through that quad stretch. And you can walk your hands in, coming back up. I'm gonna readjust my blanket here so it's right under the knees. And you actually might want one block for this next pose. We're gonna stretch through the tops of the ankles here. So coming to this position, just sitting on your heels. And if just this position here feels like a little bit too much, you can place another cushion or a blanket between your heels and your glutes, just so that our knees aren't fully bent in this place here. But once you've settled and we're in our seated position, your hands will reach behind you, taking your weight back over your fingertips, and then just lifting the knees ever so slightly to stretch through the front of the shins and into the front of the ankles. So again, just finding a little ankle stretch here, trying to release tension in through those muscles that reach up into the knee joint. And if you need, you can take that block and place it under your knees here, just for, again, a little bit of extra support. We'll take another three breaths, holding this position. Feel your shoulders plugging back, shoulder blades are coming together and down your back. And gently release your knees back down onto your blanket and bring your hands back to center. You can go ahead and move all of your props off to the side now. And we're gonna make our way into Shavasana. So coming down, onto your back. Actually, before we do Shavasana, let's reintroduce those little knee circles that we started class with. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So just really gently, again, like you're massaging your lower back into the mat. Make a little circles. And then go the other way. And then coming to center here, let's take the knees and separate them, maybe bringing them in towards your armpits, almost like a modified happy baby. So stretching in through the groin and the inner thighs. And if you'd like to take it into your full happy baby, you can do that here. So flexing the feet, bringing them up. And again, make sure that your ankles are right over your knees. So we still have those same rules of alignment here in our happy baby. So we're not pulling the feet in or letting them open wide. We're tracking them right over top of our knees so that our knees are finding that true hinge position at 90 degrees. 
And you can sway a little bit side to side, but again, making sure that that doesn't affect the integrity of our knees here and their alignment. Taking one more breath in your happy baby. And we'll release the hold of the legs. Now coming down into our Shavasana. So let your legs open up underneath you. Arms will extend, palms face up towards the sky. Your legs and your knees will flop open. Your knees will relax. And just take a moment to notice any sensations through the lower part of our body. Notice any heat or buzzing through the muscles. Notice how the knees in particular feel after that hyper awareness that we brought into today's practice. be here for too too long we'll just take another five breaths or so at your own pace Gently start to wake up your body, moving your ankles, moving your wrists, maybe letting your head fall from side to side. And when you're ready, just making your way onto one side and then up into a seated position. Any position that feels comfortable for your knees, especially. Feeling your sit bones in contact with the mat. And we'll take our hands together in front of the heart, bowing forward, namaste. Thank you for doing this practice with me. I hope that some of those modifications that we introduced are things that you can bring forward into future practices. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you go, and I will see you on the mat again very soon. Have a great rest of your day.